To read numbers 14 and I think and 15 we'll check them out and see if we can go on and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land <clears throat> to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be, be a prey? Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. So, it's like, let's make us a president. Alright, and when Moses and Aaron fell on their face before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Now, I want you to also look at this word congregation. It is a Bible, uh, a church word, okay? And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephima, which were of them that scattered the land, rent their clothes. Now, if you look, Moses and all them did not want them doing all this. Alright, 7. And they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an ex exceedingly good land. If the Lord delight in us, then we will bring us unto this land and give it to us, or give it us. The land with flowing with milk and honey, only we re rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, and their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. In other words, he's saying, don't fear them because God is on our side, and he's going to make sure that we get it, that we have it. Number 10. Be all the congregation uh, bade stone with them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be year they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? And I have to say, God is asking the same question today. How long will you people believe what the Catholic Church and what the government says? Because they are most indefinitely not on my side. Um, number 12. I will smoke them with the pestilence, and this inhabited them, and they will make of thee a greater nation and a mightier than they. 
<coughs> and Moses said unto the Lord, When the Egyptians shall fear it, shall hear it, for thou brought up this people in thy might among, uh, from among them, and they shall tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, and thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud stretches over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all those people, and one man, then the nation which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring those people into the land, which he swore unto them, before he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of, of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and trespassing, and by no means cleaning the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation. Now this right here has a lot in it. Now, God is long-suffering. He wants you to go into His Word and find out what He actually wants out of all the people. And it's the same for me and for you. To give Him and His Son recognition and our love and our devotion and our time. And he, it says, and, and he has great mercy on you because he wants you to do it. Look, they say is, ignorance is bliss. I'm going to tell you, ignorance is not bliss when it comes to God's word. It is not. You need to learn what it actually says, not what other men say. Even go back and 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 relook at what I tell you, because you know I am a man. But I'm gonna tell you right now, this word, it ain't gonna change. And he says, I change not. Okay. <laughs> and um. <clears throat> okay, let's see. We are on, and, and this is right here, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children in the third and fourth generation. Now, let's just say, look at it like this. If you believe that Jesus Christ is white, and it keeps going down the generations, you, I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be a curse. Can you understand what I'm saying? Look. And you will see that Jesus Christ was, I'm, I'm going to say it, it's a bronze color, okay? If you go back and look in Revelations. Matter of fact, let me go look for it. Alright, this is in Revelations and 1 and 12. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And I be in turn, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And then in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. A griddle, gr girdle, yeah, girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame of fire, and his feet into a fine brass, as it was burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sword, a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun in his strength. Now, if you look, look up what the color bronze is. And then you'll say, 
Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Okay, let's go on. We are on Numbers 19. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men which have, been, have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now ten times, I have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall see the Lamb, which I swore unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. So he's saying, look, if you don't believe him and you keep provoking him. Now, let's look at what today's, uh, what you could provoke Jesus with now or the Father. You know, you could provoke him today. And you're not going to see the promised land. Okay? And the promised land is heaven. It's the land where he's at, you know, the New Jerusalem. All right? Let's see what they are. Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, um, Halloween, all these pagan days. They're not the only ones, but let's just give them a start from the very tip top and work our way down. So, I am saying that when you do these things, you are provoking him. You're saying, I don't want nothing to do with you. Now, y'all can do what you want. I'm just telling you what the truth is. And the truth will set you free. Because, look at all, you are bound. You are bound to that dollar bill. You're putting that dollar bill before him. You want me to show you, let me show you how you're putting a your dollar bill before him. Because you have to go out on Christmas and Halloween and Easter and all these days... Even right down to Valentine's, you gotta put that dollar bill out there and all. And what are you taking from with that dollar bill? Huh? Can you, can you understand where I'm coming from? I don't know where I'm gonna get her some flowers and candy at. I don't know where I'm gonna get him some candy or whatever you wanna give him on Valentine's Day. How about Christmas? Christmas is the biggest. You put yourself in bondage. You are servant to the lender, okay? Now, I'm going to let you all look that one up, or I may put it in the comment, or the thing here. But you, you, look, when you borrow money, you are servant to that lender, okay? All right, 24. But my servant Caleb, because he has another spirit within him, and hath followed me fully, him I will bring unto the land, whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. See, because Caleb believed what God had said. Hey, look, people, we can do this. We can possess this. God's going to give it to us. And, um, so... We are to believe what God said. Okay? Now the Anaki and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? See, he is even calling them evil because they did not believe what he had said. It's the belief in what he says. If he tells me, hey, I believe that, uh, you know, you're, Sandy, you're going to get this done, and I'll, I'm going to believe him for it. All right, which murmured against me. I have heard the murmuring of the children of Israel, which they murmured against me. <clears throat> now, if you don't think that you murmur against Christ, uh, let's say on his 
birthday. Oh, December the 25th as they do it. And uh, that, that is against him. That's like you all saying my birthday was March the 4th. My birthday ain't March the 4th. My mother's is March the 4th. My birthday is January the 30th. You get where I'm coming from? All right, 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. So everybody that was twenty years and older that said, "Oh, we don't want to go in there because they might kill us," you know, and uh, he says, "I'm going to get rid of you." You're not going to see it. You're not going to be able to do it because you don't have the trust in me. So how about all these people? They went, came out of Egypt. They seen everything that God had done. And us to take us down to a little bit more perspective here. Uh, even today, you can look and you can see the wonders that God has done. Like, look at the trees. Look at the flowers. Look at your... Uh, the bread that you eat. God came up with all this. Look at the things that God has done. I know. Man-made stuff is covering everything that God made. And you don't really, you can't see it because of other man-made stuff. But just go out and say, God, open my eyes and let me see the, what you have made, what you have done. All right, we're on 30. Doubtless, ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb the son of Japhunatha, well, okay, I'll butcher that, and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. So they're saying, <coughs> I despise the land because of all these giants that are in the land. Let's look at it as nowadays term. You know, all these big people. Uh, go into Hollywood, and you're going to see nothing but big people there. you got all these Hollywood stars there and everything. You know, I know we got little people there too, but they got to have somebody con to control. You know, no matter where you go. You're going to be controlled. But the thing of it is, is what do you believe? Do you believe that you are free? I believe I'm free. Let me tell you why I believe I'm free. Because Jesus Christ dwells in me and he makes me free. And I do not despise what he has and what he gives me. Sometimes the bad is, is for my good in the long run. 32. But as for you, your carcass, they shall fall in the wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness for, for forty years, and bear your whoredom until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. So in other words, that all these people are going to die because of their whoredom because they did not want to believe so if you say okay believing in the way that the the people the majority of the people today believe that Jesus Christ and the Creator Father God is you are in the majority and you do not want to be in the majority. You want to be in the the low lowest of people. That okay? You got two different roads. You got one road that is traveled a lot, and you got one that is not traveled at all. You can't even tell where the path is because it's so grown up. That's the path you want. You don't want the one that is really freely open and easy to follow. You don't want that path. Alright, 34. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, 
each day for a year. You shall bear your iniquity, even forty years, and you shall know my branch of promise. So, here he's saying, look, y'all, I'm going to make sure y'all just wander around in the wilderness because you don't believe me. And I'm going to do it for every year. I mean, every day for a year. That's 40 years. They spent 40 days in there. They're going to spend 40 years in the wilderness. 35. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto this this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there shall die. And, um, and the man which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land uh, died by the plague before the Lord. <clears throat> but Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of G, let's see, G, Femeth, which were of the men that went to search the land, still lived. And Moses told these sayings unto all the congregation of Israel, and the uh, and the people murmured greatly. In other words, they didn't like what God had to say. Instead of saying, "Hey, God, forgive me," I have learned that going down this road with everybody else is a wrong road to go down. Lord, give me the opportunity to go through the the pathway that's not, you know, traveled. <coughs> I want to go down that pathway. And that's the pathway I always chose to go. Alright. <coughs> and Moses told these saying to all the children of Israel. And he per the people murmured greatly. And they arose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain. Saying, Lo, we be there. And we let's see, and will go up into the place which the Lord had promised. For we have sinned. See, they, they're saying we sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you trust grasp the commandment of the Lord, but it shall not prosper? Oh, let's well, see. <coughs> because you all did not, and now you see the error of your way. It's, you know, you're not, it's, okay, let's read this again. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of the Lord, but it shall not prosper? All right, it's not going to prosper. You, you're not going to change his mind. You cannot change his mind. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. Don't go up there on that mountain. You're going you're gonna to get Smite down because you're right there in front of your enemies. You're going to let your enemies see your God kill you. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are more are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. Alright, so if you don't want to be with the Lord, you're not going to be with the Lord. He don't want to be with you if you don't want to be with Him. So, I'm saying, uh, Lord, I want to be with you. What do I have to give up that I like? What do I have to give up to be with you? And go, listen to what His Word says. Alright. But they presume to go up into the, t the hilltop. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. And the Abimelechs came down, and the Canaanites which dwelled in that hill, and smote them, and discomforted them, even to Hormah. So, in other words, these people went up, and they, they killed them. They killed the people, because they did not want them there. Look, God is not with you. You better not go up there and mess with them people. 
Because God ain't going to let it happen. All right. I'm going to take me a minute. Then we'll come back and do 15. All right. Let's work on 15. All right. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come unto the land of your habitation, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering or a sacrifice, and performing a vow or a free will offering, or in your solemn figs, to make a sweet savor unto the Lord of the herd or of the flock. Then shall he that offer his offering unto the Lord bring a meat offering of the tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of a hen of oil. And the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. Shalt thou prepare with the burnt offering or sacrifice for a lamb? Oh, come on now, Mama Cat. Uh, six. Or for a ram, thou shalt prepare for a meat offering. Two tenth deal of flour mingled with the third part of a hen of oil. And for a drink offering, thou shalt offer the third part of a hen of wine. For a sweet savor unto the Lord. And when thou preparest a bullock for a burnt offering or for a sacrifice in performing a vow or a place offering unto the Lord, then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering a three tenth deal of flour mingled with half a hint of oil. <clears throat> and thou shalt bring for a drink offering half a hen of wine for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Thus shall it be done for one bullock, or for one ram, or for a lamb, or a kid, according to the number that ye shall prepare. So shall ye do to every one according to their number. All that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner, an offering for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your, con in your generation, and shall offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord, as ye do, so he shall do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for a stranger that sojourn with you, <clears throat> an ordinance forever in your generation as you are. So shall the stranger be before the Lord. Now, I really, really want to look at this word congregation. So I'm going to go look up another Bible verse. All right, I am looking at Isaiah 14 and 12. Now, I want you to pay attention to this word congregation and look at it from a different standpoint of view. You know, he's called them people a congregation. Now, uh, and can you understand what I'm saying? If you are against God, he's calling you a congregation. Okay? So, <clears throat> Let's look at Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? Thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. And I will sin above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So here we have Lucifer saying, I am going to be above the congregation. I'm going to take, I'm going to be there. 
you're not going to be there, God. So can you see what I'm saying about the congregation? Look at the congregation in the church. Do they actually really teach what and who and why God sent His Son for us? Okay, let's go on. We are on number 16 in Numbers. Um, numbers 15, 16. <laughs> Uh, one law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourns with you. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land, whether I bring you, then it shall be that when ye eat of the bread of the land, ye shall offer up a half offering unto the Lord. Ye shall offer up a cake of first of your dough for a half offering, as ye do the half offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye have it. Of the first of the dough ye shall give unto the Lord a half offering in your generation. And if ye have eared and not observed all the commandments which the Lord hath gave and spoken unto Moses. Even all the land that commanded you by the hands of Moses from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforth among your generation. <coughs> when it shall be, if aught be com commended by the ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering, for a sweet savor unto the Lord, with a meat offering and his drink offering, according to the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. All right, now I want to go back and I want you to listen to this again. Then it shall be, if ought be committed by ignorance. So it's saying, if you served me by ignorance, okay, without the knowledge of the congregation. If you are going to the church and you are serving me by ignorance because of your, all the other people there are believing what this so-called preacher is telling you, okay, all, I see that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering. You still have to sacrifice because you did not go and learn the truth. You did not learn it. All right. For a sweet savor unto the Lord. With the, his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner. And one kid of the goat for a sin offering. See, you're still sinning. You are not going by what uh, uh, the Creator is saying how to serve Him. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation, the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiving them. For it is ignorance. You do not want to be ignorant. There is another verse that I'm going to go look up. All right, here we are in... 2 Timothy 2 and 15. It says to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. In other words, go and find out exactly what he is saying. Now you've got the right way and you've got the wrong way. You have the right way in the Bible and you have the wrong way in the Bible. And you have to discern which one is what. And that's totally up to you. Because you got two two you got two gods in this Bible. You have the Creator, Father God, and then you have the adversary, which is Satan, the devil, Lucifer. You know, you have them in there. And you're going ouch, please don't do that, cat. Scratching my legs. So you ha you're the one that has to go look that up. You're the one that has to look at it and say, what is this saying? 
Okay, we are on 26. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel and the stranger that sojourns among you, seeing all the people were in ignorance. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. So, ignorance is sin. There's no two way about it. If you want to sit there in ignorance and not learn the truth, then you are sinning. Alright, 28. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sin sinneth ignorance, ignorantly. Then he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord, and make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. See, you can be forgiven by going and asking him for forgiveness and do it, start doing the right thing. God allows you turns, okay? 29. Uh, ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him and that is born among the children of Israel. And for all these strangers that sojourneth among you, but the soul that doeth up promiscuously, okay, so that word, whether he be born any land or a stranger, the same reproach the Lord, that that soul shall be cut off from among his people. In other words, if you want to stay in your ignorant bliss, you go right on ahead. You will be cut off. Okay? Because he has despised the word of the Lord and have broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. So, this is what I'm seeing here. You get before God and you cannot go, well, God, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Protestant. I'm a Seventh-day Advent. I'm a Mormon. I'm a Catholic. You can't get out there and say that. God don't recognize that. God recognizes the blood on your heart. And what? And just think about every blood drop that Christ gave up is a subject in this Bible. You could continue on for generations and generations until you're dead and keep learning what exactly he wants you to do and how he wants you to think. He does not want you to think neg negatively like this world does. He wants you to think positively. And I'm telling you what, you do better when you uh think positive because when you think negative 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 always brings in more negative but when you bring in positive you are bringing in more positive but negativity you don't want that that's a uh, sorrow of heart okay all right we're on 32 and while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathered sticks, brought him unto Moses and Aaron, and to, the, and to all the congregation. In other words, he brought him into for everybody to see. And they put him in war, because it was not declared what should be done to him? And the Lord said to Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stone without the camp. Now, I am going to tell you I do not understand this. But I have to say, <coughs> there is a reason why God done this. There is a reason why God does everything that he does. Think about this. Back in the olden times, and I cannot remember what uh, king done this, but he decided he wanted to change the week 
and make everything a weekday. You know, a week. There, instead of seven days in a week, there is eight days. You are going to work eight uh, seven days, and on the eighth day, you can have off. Well, I'm going to tell you, the people started dying in groves and being sick in groves. It could not work because God has set it up for seven days in your life. Every day, you are supposed to work that sixth day, up to sixth day. And then on the Sabbath day, which is a Saturday, you are to rest. And it really starts from Friday night until uh, Saturday night. And you can find that in Genesis. And I'll go back and find it and I'll read it to you. All right, we're going to look at Genesis 1 and 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So, the evening and the morning, you are supposed to be able to rest. Okay? Alright, now, let's see. We are on 15. And I lost my spot. Okay, 36. And all the congregation bought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. And the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes of the borders of their garments throughout their generations, that they put on put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them that ye seek not after your own heart and after your own eyes after which ye use to, do, to go a whoredom. Now, so... In his, the guy's own heart, he says, I don't, I'm going to go against what God commanded me to do. Okay, we're figuring this out, the reason why God killed him. And I'm going to do what I want to do. So therefore, you put me first instead of putting God first. So no wonder God said, you have to die. So now we can be fit. We figured out why God said, "If you don't do my commandments, you are to die." Look where we are today, and if they would have kept up the tradition of killing people that would that went against God, yes, I probably would have already been dead by now. And probably you too. But who knows? You probably would not have been. Because you said, hey, I don't want to end up dead. I want to go with what God wants. And, and give him recognition. Okay? Okay. So, we can understand why God killed uh, uh, him because of the Sabbath. Because he put himself first and not God. Alright. Forty. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Alright, I I pray that I do better on my Sabbath days then. And be able to know the difference, you know, and do better. Because... Uh, I want to be with him. I don't want to disappear and be on no matter at all. Alright, thanks for listening. If you actually do, and I hope you do. And I love you guys. Bye.